Hello everyone, Ken here back with another video for you. Today I'm talking about how I personally learned data science. Now, my road was fairly long, it was fairly obtuse, and I wouldn't recommend it for, for most people, but it got me to a destination of actually learning the data science concepts. Now, I don't think that there's one correct way to go about you know, learning these concepts and getting a job, but we can learn from my story and other people's stories about what might be the most efficient way to get to this end destination. There are definitely some things that I did well on this learning journey, and there are some things that I would probably like to go back and change. Hopefully this video will give you perhaps a framework for going about learning data science on your own, and will give you a, some perspective on what this learning process is like. If you're new to my channel, my name is Ken, and I'm an experienced data scientist that makes videos about getting into the data science or sports analytics field. I also make some tutorials and showcase a few of my own projects for your viewing pleasure. If you enjoy this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be alerted when I publish my next weekly video. So my personal data science journey started when I was in college. When I first entered, I had absolutely no clue what I wanted to do. And I actually went through, I think it was seven different majors. Now, school was not overwhelmingly important to me. I had a lot of other things on my mind. And through this process, I got a lot of diversity of thought from the different things that I studied or attempted to study. So I had seven different majors and three of them actually made me take an introductory stats course. So I took a stats for, I believe it was psychology, a stats for business, and a stats for health exercise science. So all of these courses basically had, you know, the same core concepts. They were all basic statistics. And after the third time taking effectively the same course, I got pretty good and pretty comfortable with statistics. I eventually found economics and decided to finish majoring in that. And I really fell in love with trying to understand the world through numbers and trends. This also had a good parallel with my other love at the time, which was golf. I played golf in college, and I was one of the few people that was using data analytics to actually measure myself and improve my game. By the end of my college career, I had really turned around my grades, I'd really turned around my educational philosophy, and I was ready to tackle kind of bigger and more interesting problems. Now, if you're interested in how I actually made that transition from going from a poor student to a, a pretty good student, I have a blog post that I wrote about that in the description below. So in college, I got a basic level understanding of statistics. We ran some regressions, we did some descriptive statistics, but there wasn't anything too intense there. Where I really learned more was from my experience actually applying this to my golf game. I understand or I understood why you would actually apply certain methodologies and the outputs of these things. And I could see a real world impact of how this would affect my golf game. After college, I tried my hand at actually playing professional golf. And it turns out that frankly, I was not good enough. The other guys out there absolutely took me to school. So I decided that I enjoyed this kind of sports analytics field and I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to get more skills that would make me valuable to a company in that space. And I decided that the best way to actually learn more of these skills is to go back to grad school. So I applied to the MS Commerce program at the University of Virginia. This program basically prepares you with some statistics, some consulting abilities and, and some finance understanding so you can break into consulting or the investment banking fields. After I got in, I still had a three month period before I started classes. So I applied to a couple internships and I ended up getting a marketing analytics internship at a company called DraftKings. And they were in the daily fantasy sports space. At DraftKings, I was working in a new technology driven environment that I had never experienced before. People were using technologies like SQL and Python that I had no exposure to at all. So through this experience, I learned some very basic SQL. I learned what it was used for, what a database is. And I also saw some of the high end use cases for machine learning. They were doing very advanced stuff. 
And that really lit a fire under me to want to understand this sports analytics industry better, but also to understand the data science and machine learning at a higher degree. At Virginia, I learned even more SQL. I also learned a lot more about the basic statistics that I had studied in college. We used SPSS mostly. We used some of these uh, software statistic packages. And I learned about classification, clustering, regression, the main analyses that you use in the field today. In this program, I also learned something equally as important about the soft skills associated with consulting or even associated with data science. I learned how to put a really good presentation together. I learned how to argue my point. And I also learned how to create really compelling visuals that told a good story. I think that something that is really overlooked a lot in data science is the storytelling aspect. You have to get buy-in, you have to get people to understand what your message is. And a lot of that is how you frame it and how you deliver it. And if we really break that down, that is just this storytelling that I continue to talk about. After grad school, I worked in consulting. I thought it was a good way to develop my skills further and also to open a lot of doors for myself professionally. Consulting is a very broad career and it really does have great exit opportunities in general. As it turns out, I absolutely hated it. And I realized that I wanted to get back into that sports analytics, kind of the, the heavier kind of number oriented career path. So during this time, I took it on myself to learn how to program. I'd heard a lot about how programming was really important for the analytics, but also how Programming is a great way to be able to empower yourself to create new projects. If you can program, you can build a company yourself, you know, if you have the drive and, and the resources. So after about six months of self-taught programming, I think I used Code Academy at the time, and I was really focusing on Python. I decided that this is something that I was pretty passionate about, and I wanted to dive into it, uh, you know, headfirst. I wanted to really tackle this industry because with my consulting and business background, I thought the technology aspect or the coding and programming aspect would be a huge boon going forward. At this point, I went online and I found a couple different master's programs that would accept me without having a computer science background. So I ended up applying and I got into a school in Chicago to get my master's in computer science. I focused on computer science more than I did on data science or predictive analytics because I was also really interested in entrepreneurship and I thought that having a more broad kind of software engineering skill set as well would pay me more dividends if I wanted to go the pure entrepreneurship path as well. During my master's in computer science, I got most of the, I guess, pure technical and mathematical understanding of data science. I had to take a lot of, you know, discrete math, a lot of probability courses, and I also had to understand what basically good programming paradigms were. In that program, I concentrated in machine learning and AI. So I really got a good taste of how to you know, build these models and how to implement them in the field. One of the core components of a lot of these machine learning classes is you have to code the algorithms from scratch. So you get a great sense of the math behind them because you actually have to understand the math to be able to implement them. During this time, I learned more advanced SQL. I also learned a lot about the machine learning algorithms that we use in practice today. And I learned a lot about the software engineering best practices, which have really paid a lot of dividends in my work today. I was very lucky that in my, in my schoolwork, a lot of my professors really stressed a hands-on approach to learning these things. There was a project-based philosophy in a lot of my classes and I was able to work on projects that I was interested in. So for most of my machine learning, my, my deep learning classes, et cetera, we were, we were told to pick our own project, find our own data, our own data and to build models that, that we saw a true impact with. So I was able to build out my portfolio while in school, largely because of the flexibility of a lot of my professors. Being interested in sports analytics as well meant I had a lot of projects queued up that I wanted to work on. So along with the projects that I did for my professors and my class work, I was also working on my own projects in my free time. During this time, I had also started working mostly full time doing some contract work in the sports analytics field. So I was able to apply a lot of the things that I was learning in the classroom to my work outside as well. And that was really cool. That made that supercharged my learning because I was able to take a lot of these conceptual things and apply them right away. 
During the second master's degree, I was fortunate enough to get a couple internships. I was able to see how data science is applied in Fortune 100 companies and in startups. So I learned a lot about how to implement data science models, how different the data is in the real world versus kind of this uh, canned classroom setting. And I was really able to experiment and try some different things through these projects. After finishing school, I obviously started working full time and I continued my learning through a variety of different channels. So one is through my own personal projects. Again, through this YouTube channel, I'm able to work on my communication, my presentation skill, as well as some of the projects that you have seen me do. Now, I've also improved my data science capabilities by going to meetups, meeting other data scientists, seeing what they're working on and getting some of this free informational content that is out there. I love watching YouTube videos as well. And there's a lot of really good content out there and people are doing awesome stuff just, you know, in their rooms with, with being able to share it through a camera. Now, looking back, I really only want to get my master's in computer science because for me personally, I didn't think that I would be willing to sit down and learn all of this stuff on my own. You know, there's great free resources out there that are just as good as any of the courses that I took but you really have to be self-disciplined and you have to be able to structure your own time to tackle learning data science in this way. I think that that is the lowest cost option. I think that that is generally the best option if you can do it. I mean, yes, it is nice to have a master's degree, but if I could do you know, cooler work, if I had this time and it built out a really awesome project portfolio, I think that these would carry the same amount of weight. Also going to school again twice, you accumulate, you accrue a ton of student debt. I mean, I'm over $100,000 in student loan debt. And, you know, that is something that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, for, I'm fortunate enough that I, I can cover those payments, but that is something that is pretty large hanging over my head. And you have to have some level of uh, comfort with risk to be able to, to take on debt like that. My biggest takeaway from my entire learning experience is that Data science is best learned through action. It's best learned through doing projects and the projects that you do really pay dividends in the long run. Every interview I've had, I've talked primarily about the work that I've done in the past. If you do a diverse enough set of projects, you'll find someone or you'll find a project that your interviewer is very interested in. It might touch their personal life. It might touch a, a hidden interest of theirs. And to be able to share that connection is very important. I also think that doing projects is the best way to really grow your skills. If you're working on these real world projects, you run into things, uh, challenges that you don't necessarily see in a canned classroom setting. So if I could stress anything to you all, it would be to work on these projects, to fail, to struggle with them, because that will make you learn exponentially faster. And it'll also give you something to show for your learning. At the end of the video, I have a couple more videos about the projects you should do to get you a data science job, as well as how I would actually go about learning programming for data science if I were to do it again. Those are, are really my, my best pieces of advice for picking this up and making the most out of your data science journey. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck.